Hi, this is Ed with Ed's Two Cents Worth, and I'm going to give you my two cents today on uh, using bed rail. Uh, bed rail, I don't use it a lot. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, and the reason for that is because of the type of metal that it is. Uh, but some fellows uh, use exclusively bed rail, and uh, they do so because they can get it usually free, people throwing out an old bed and the bed rail is there. And uh, so they snatch it up. This is not to say that it's not worth anything and that it uh, uh, doesn't have its place, because it does. But one of the problems that I hear in regards to bed rails is drilling it. And uh, we'll talk about that. That's mainly what this uh, video is about and a technique that I use and you can take it and use it or you can say well that's a bunch of hooey and not uh, use it at all whatever you want to do but I'm going to tell you what it is but first off a little bit about the metal itself uh, bed rails most people don't realize it but this is recycled material it's repurposed and what it comes from is uh, railroad bed rails uh, they take, they don't melt it down and re-pour it. They take and extrude it, which is a process of uh, heating it to near melting point and uh, pressing it down thinner and thinner and thinner to the point where they can uh, form this. And they get a lot of this out of one bed rail. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, because they're using bed rail, and because bed rail comes from all parts of the world, it does not have a constant uh, makeup that you can depend upon. Uh, bed rail, depending on where it's from, the carbon content may be extremely high. In other places, the carbon content is less. And that explains why sometimes you'll have bed rail that seems to be easy to work with, and other bed rail that you can't do anything with. Now, because of that, because of the carbon content is high, even in the lower end of the bed rails, the ones that are easy to work with, the carbon content is fairly high compared to, say, structural steel, A36 and so on. Um, bed rail is very difficult to drill usually. You hear complaints all the time. How do I drill bed rail? How do I drill bed rail? Well this is a technique that I use that I'm going to talk about today and I'm going to show you uh, what I do. If you have difficulties drilling through bed rail try this. Now you can see this piece of bed rail right here and it's got several holes in it at different times. Some of these are factory, some of them that uh, I've been fooling around with and drilling in and so on. But if you're having particular difficulty drilling into bed rail, see if you can get yourself a pilot hole, even something just as small as that little one eighth hole right there. Okay, if you can go bigger with regular drill bit, that's fine. But this is the thing that I use to get through bed rail when I'm having difficulties. And it is a die grinder bit, it's got some metal shavings on it right now hopefully you can see that all right I like the tapered because I can start in a very small hole and work up I don't have to buy a die grinder if you got one great you know but you don't have to and you can use this at high speeds and uh, just using your regular drill you got to really clamp down on the chuck because it'll it'll slip it's not uh, it's perfectly round shank and so it tends to slip a little bit unless you really get tight on the the uh, chuck but let me start on this little one right here we'll do some of these others too but let me uh, start on this little one and we can see uh, how effective that this is okay so I'm on high speed
you can see it's, it's going through okay now if I have drill bit it take me a month of Sundays on some bed rail to get through to this this far but if I want to increase the effectiveness I can waller it just a little bit Okay, I got a couple of bolts here. That's a 5 16 bolt. Just fits. 3 8 won't fit yet. Let me try some more. Now, as I get into it, I've got to back off. I can't push as hard because it will bind the drill. And sometimes you might even go in reverse. The 3 8 will fit. It's a tight fit. Now I'm changing out to a little bit larger. This is the one I had here. And this is the one I'm going to because I want to get this a little bit bigger. And I'll just use this to show the others. But in any case, this if you do this, it's going to slip in the... So you got to... Kind of really crank it down there. That's the three eighths going in there. Okay, so let's try some of these others. got to press more lightly as you get into the beefier part because once you start getting down up into this section here it's really grabbing hold and it's going to stop the uh, drill from turning. A little bit of oil might make a little bit of difference but sometimes oil will clog these little uh, surfaces in here. It will cut in reverse, but it's much slower in reverse. Now, there's a hole with a whole bunch of slot for a 3 8 bolt. Now, I just wanted to show you that there's a wide variety of these uh, die grinder bits that are available. Uh, obviously, this one here has a long shank. And uh, you would use this uh, only in places where it's very hard to reach with your drill. Um, you wouldn't want to put this thing in too much of a bind because you'll be able to snap the, the shaft off. So uh, this, this one you'd use kind of sparingly in particular circumstance. Uh, these others, of course, uh, uh, you want to look at the pattern uh, that's on them. Of course, let's take this one here. This is a long tapered, and if you look at the cutting edge, you see sort of a, a crisscross pattern. Now note the difference in something like this. No crisscross, just long lines of cut, okay? This is not as effective in cutting holes. This is like for reaming out and kind of smoothing a hole, okay, that's already cut. Same with this, and if you're working with surfaces where you want to sort of have a, a, a bottom seat that's nice and neat, this nice round uh, tip, and of course you can get those in different sizes. Again, you've got different patterns of cut. These are, the ones that crisscross are effective for drilling holes and uh, uh, boring. There's another one, slightly different pattern but very effective in cutting.
these are you notice the difference is not as long so the taper is shorter and it's kind of a, a rounded taper it's not straight line taper okay very effective this is the one I was using to do the 7 16 hole this will cut up to a half an inch right here uh, this one here I was using first this one will cut up to uh, 3 8 just slightly under 3 8 actually so you see a wide variety of these things uh, you can get them online uh, it's important to have probably a couple of them uh, very minimum uh, you want uh, maybe something like this and like this and like this and then a straight one so that if you go in uh, like you notice that this is cuts taper and it doesn't quite fit well you want to clean it out with something like this so I would suggest getting uh, the 3 8 type size uh, this will cut anywhere from about a little over an eighth of an inch all the way up to 3 8 this will definitely you can put that into a 3 uh, 1 8 hole and cut up to 3 8 this one here you're gonna have to have at least a quarter inch hole to start it up to about a half an inch so just think it out what you want to do but I would I would recommend for example having something like that that would be a real nice way to uh, cover most of your drilling needs so just a couple of concluding thoughts in regards to uh, using die grinder bits um, when you buy die grinder bits, you can get them in different size shanks. Uh, quarter inch, I find to be very versatile. The eighth inch, probably going to be snapping them off. Um, another thing that die grinder bits are good for, have you ever tried welding a piece of material and you had to get deep down into a little corner to clean it up so that it would take the weld? Those things are perfect. They can get right into that corner, and you can lay your your your, uh, your drill down kind of as flat as you can get, and you kind of just oh, you make a a nice clean uh, preparation for your weld. Uh, that is, of course, if you're welding uh, onto bed rail. But uh, whatever the case may be, but uh, you can see this uh, piece where I have several holes here and I start with a small hole and I go to the die grinder and uh, go through it with the uh, bigger hole uh, depending on the size hole I want I'll use a die grinder drill in and then I'll take a bolt and I'll test it to see if I'm at the right size that way you don't go oversized and uh, you know have a, a, a bigger hole Anyway, uh, you can get your die grinders online if you want, now the, the bits, uh, if you've got a good store that has uh, uh, good tools in it, some of the um, lumber related stores have a nice tool department, you can oftentimes find them there, but uh, uh, try that. Get some die grinders, you can buy a basic set of die grinders for 20 bucks, and uh, they're worth their weight in gold when it comes to drilling through um, bed rail. So that's my two cents. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.